Hey guys, this is Chidero, Chidero's Bling, Chidero's Designs, and today we're going to attempt to make this bracelet. It is nothing new as far as stitches. We've done them before. Its only um, difference is that it is made specifically for two hole bling, meaning you have a hole on this side and a hole on this side, so you're going to have two bands for bling. Now this one I didn't finish, I did post it uh, because it is a little bit short so I need to add to it. But here is the back, so all of your loom band stitches will be hidden in the back and it's a little bit cradled in there. And you can take it and kind of push it, but it all depends on what type of bling that you have to use, okay? So, big shout out again to Margot MS Loom. She had sent me a ton of colored chain, and this is a gorgeous, beautiful chain that um, I used on this one. So, there is two ways that you can do this. If you notice on this rendition here, the links that are sticking out. So, this is a curb chain, but if you notice, they're facing opposite directions on both sides and that's only from the way you can stitch it so you see this one here is going up and then you look on this side and this one is going down and that's because I stitched it going from the top down which I'll show you whenever we go to to make the bracelet so it kind of looks like a little barbed wire effect okay so it's stable it's very loose and free but as you uh, all that know me know that my goal is always to create bracelets that don't look like rubber bands, and this one surely does not. So just a few things I wanted to show you, give you some examples of some bling. So this is the bling that I used in that bracelet there, which I bought a bracelet similar to this at Michael's, and it's like $4, and it has about, let's see, one, two, three, four... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 maybe of these beautiful rhinestone uh, charms or beads. If you were to buy those separately, you probably spend about $20. So I always uh, suggest buying bracelets that are already designed and then just take a pair of scissors and cut it up. So anyhow, that is how I found these charms. They were or beads. They were on an existing bracelet. But as I mentioned, they have two holes. Okay, so that's the kind of bling that we're looking for. So this one here is a long one, which you could use, absolutely use if you wanted a cup design. So you have two holes, one on both sides. Another example on a bracelet that I did cut up, oops, is this little bling. Now this one has three holes, but when you wear it and you bling it onto the chains, you will not see that center Hole. So again, we have them on both sides. Another example would be this one here. Even though it has a million holes, we just need two holes on both sides. You could even go as far as making one with larger beads. And this one actually has four holes. So we would bead it, or we would add the bands going across like that. Another example, this one here. So I think you guys are kind of getting my my point as far as what type of bling that you need to use. This one, another example, you would just thread it down, but we just need a band with two loops on both sides. So today I'm going to use this bling here. And usually when you have large beads as so, your holes are going to be um, pretty large. You know, so I will show you right now. I've got my uh, beading thread, which is just a thin gauge wire, and we're just simply going to stick it through one side of the hole, thread it through, take it out. You want to make sure that your band is straight in there, and then add the band to your threading tool again and thread it through the other side like that. That's it. Okay, so as far as chain, 
I'm going to use this beautiful purple type chain. It is aluminum and it is very thin and light and airy, which means that it is easy to break apart uh, as far as if you have it come in a long strand like this. So we need two of them and you want it to fit your wrist and it does not shrink, it does not grow. So as you measure it, just make sure that it fits around your wrist like that. And with this kind of chain that is a little bit lighter, it is a little bit, it's sometimes a little bit more challenging to keep the links straight, but we'll be okay. So the way that I like to do these bracelets, which this one is exact, it's almost identical to, I think the curb effect I made, I'm not sure, but one of my chains, uh, this is number five in my chain series, but I like to use the loom and then I like to, to use it as a guide. So simply just want to take any band because this one will come off in the end and just pull it through that first link like this. And then I just want to place it on a loom peg. So it will help me as a guide coming down. So I want to do, well, you can actually, you don't, you, we'll just do one at a time. You don't even need to do the second one yet because we loom this one side at a time. Okay, so we have our chain on our loom and you need to have a hook of some sort that will fit through your chain. So the, the key here is to constantly make sure that your links are straight. It is super important that your links are straight. It may even be a good idea if you even had another loom down at the bottom here holding this tight. That would probably be like a super awesome idea to be honest with you because if you can have this held really tight actually you know what I will be right back because that is exactly what I'm going to go do. Okay so I have another loom down here and I just wrapped a band like we did at the top here and that actually might be a great idea to do to keep your chain nice and straight. So I'm going to try to position my camera here. Let me see if I can do this around this loom so I can still get the shot for you. There we go. All right, so let's start adding our, I have to move it just a little bit. Okay, so we want to take our bling here and we're going to start in this top loop up here. Okay, so we want to just stick our hook through and we want to grab the first or the top band. It is a little bit tedious and it's a little, it's a little bit hard to kind of show because I got to keep my hands in the way and I apologize, but you want to take that first top band and pull it through this chain here. And you see how that chain wants to twist already? So I'm going to take my hook out and turn it around so that band stays straight. And then I'm just going to go behind or in this next link here, like this. And then all I want to do is grab the bottom part of that band. Okay? And I want that on my hook and then I'm going to pull it through the chain and through that existing band on my hook. Okay? And now again, I want to turn my hook around so that band stays straight like that. And that's seriously all we're doing. So each bead will go through two links and that's how you will create the space in between your beads. So then again, even though that one will stay up there, make sure that your links are straight, put your hook into that next link, and then grab your next bead. 
and it looks like they're going to be crowded but they won't they will stay in place because this one is going to be in these next two which puts the center part down here so we put our hook through the next link in line we grab that top loop out of that band on the left like that and then we just want to pull it through the chain and through the existing band on our hook like that and then I again take my hook out and I turn it over and then I go through the next link in line making sure your links are straight and then grab the other end of that band pull it through the link and through the other band on my hook like that And then I want to turn my hook around to make sure that band stays straight. And that, my friends, is it. So you have your bling in the center. And the way we're looming this is kind of on the side of your chain. Okay? So again, just continuously, most importantly, make sure that all of your links are staying straight. Now, the links in between your bling, they're going to be wanting to come in, and that's fine. But we just don't want them to get turned around. Okay, so then again, we just grab our next bead and out of the two bands. We want that top band through the hook, through the B or through the chain, through the band on our hook, like that. And then I turn my hook, go through the next link and line, grab the other end of that band, pull it through the link and through the band. And then I take my hook out and turn it around. So this is exactly, again, it is exactly like my other bracelet. It's just, this one is especially designed for, for um, <clears throat> two-hole bling. That's it. It's super easy whenever it comes to concept, I guess you could say. So again, put that part of the band on, go through the chain, go through the loop on my hook. I turn my go through the next link in line grab the other end of that band pull that through and through go through the next link okay I think I used about 13 beads I think it's around 13 that worked well for my wrist size. big thing that I um, when I first did this I did it on a black chain and I did it with uh, the black cylindric or the limited edition like the round bands from Rainbow Loom and I noticed that they were they're tight and it seemed to have uh, grouped the chain a little tighter than I wanted so you might want to be careful on what type of um, bands that you use I found that using these a stretchier band allows the room for these chain the chain not to group up as much Oops, I'm sorry, I'm out of range. Okay. 
Okay, so this is what you should be seeing. And again, like I said, every other link is going to kind of face in. So you'll have like one straight, one facing in, one straight, one facing in, and then your bands will be to the side for right now, but eventually they will be turned to the back. I need to turn my chain got a little bit crooked. Let's fix my band down here. Okay, so then we're just going to continue this down. I can move this up now. We're just going to continue this exact same step. Until we reach the end. Of our loom. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me pull my camera out for you. So let's go ahead and finish this out until we reach the end and then I will meet you back. Okay, so you can see here that I have the whole left side complete and all I need to do now I'm zoomed in a little bit here if I can I have the other end of the chain added to my loom here to keep it straight so I'm just gonna add my last bead like we normally do and then my last chain is connected to this loom so then I just grab this end and pull it through like that. Then I can pull this off. And then all I'm going to do, I'm gonna take this band out. And just for now, I'm going to just slip knot the end. Just to keep it in place. So let me move this loom and then pull this down. So of course they all wanna twist every which way, you know, because we need to connect the other side. But this is the time that you really gotta make sure that all of your links are straight. So let me turn it over to the side and we can take a look and you'll be able to tell when you run your hands down it for one and two, when you lay it down you can see that they are not twisted. But once again, you should have one link that's straight, one link going in, one link straight, one link going in. Okay, so it does give that little bit of a different look, even though it is a curb chain where they're all straight. Okay, so there's two ways that you can do the opposite side. Um, the way that I did mine, as I mentioned, what I did was, is I, because I'm left-handed, I just simply flipped, I took my guide band off here, and I just flipped this over like this, added it back on, and then added my chain here to the left. And then I started and did the exact same stitch as I did on the left side. So with that being said, if you do that, your, as I mentioned in the beginning, your links on your chain are going to be going the opposite direction. So again, you can see this one's going down, 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 and on the left side, they're all going up, up, up. You can't tell when you look at it. It's something just simple that I noticed. So if that doesn't bother you and everything doesn't have to be in unison, then by all means, you know, you can do it uh, just like that. If you want to have them all in unison, uh, what I suggest would be to turn this around to the bottom like this and then loom it. And if you do from the bottom down, then you're going to get the same exact look 
on that side. But to me, I like the way it looks. So I'm going to just stick with doing it from the top. Down. Okay, so I need to add another guide band to my first link. Like that. And I'm going to put it on the next peg. Okay. We are going to be working from the side of the chain, so I did find it a lot easier to add, grab a band, to add an, a second loom down here for a guide. So make sure that all of your chain is straight. And then I'm going to grab my loom so I want to make sure that this is going to go on straight and add this other end down here like that oops There we go. So then it kind of does make the chain on a on the side. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna bring this down as far as I can with my camera because it's a it's a it's a far stretch. So let me bring this down so we can see it and adjust my camera. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, now we can see. Okay, so the way I'm doing mine is my bling will be facing down. And it's just the exact same stitch that we did. They're just a whole bunch of like slip knots. But you just want to make sure that all your bling is in order because they like to move around because the side isn't attached yet and you want to always make sure that you are grabbing the top band first. So again, we're just going to go through that first link. So I want to make sure I'm going through the right way. So I go through the first link and I grab that top band and pull it through. I turn my hook and then I want to go through that next link and grab the bottom band of that same bead and pull it through. And now I want to turn my hook around so it's not crooked and then go back through the next link I'm trying to twist it so that band gets back like that. Now we're on to our second bead. So then we're just pulling it through the link and the band. And then going through the next link, grabbing the other end of the band, pulling it through both the link and the band. And then going through again. This one's ready to come out, no!
So it's a little bit easier obviously to do the uh, other side because you have somewhat of a guide already there for you. <clears throat> but again, it's just about making that, making sure that your chain stays straight. see if I can to just so you guys can be on camera I have like my camera over my loom on the bottom just make sure that you don't pull your bands you can if if you all right let me see if I can move this now If you pull your bands tight as you're going, you're gonna pull your chain tight. And you don't wanna pull your chain tight because the tighter you make your chain, then it'll crinkle. And we don't want that. See that? I forgot to go through the link. And I tried to use clear bands because again, I, as much as I love Rainbow Loom, it's always been a goal of mine to make, it's a challenge, I guess, of mine, that I challenge myself to make jewelry that doesn't look like it's made with rubber bands. Um, the clear just really looked crappy. You could see it, it didn't hide. You know, there's a lot of times we can make jewelry and the clear bands hide the a bands effect the fact that it's bands but it really showed up so but I do suggest the metallics or just a stretchy band just so your chain does not get you know crinkled up all right let me zoom you out and we are looming again I'm just myself I'm looming I turned to find and faced my bling down. So I'm looming mine this way. And I think I can get away with just doing the rest of it on camera. Instead of pausing and us finishing on our own. Let's see if I can get it done with you. I think every one of my curb chain bracelets I do the same way as far as how I'm adding the bands to the chain. I don't think this is any different than the other ones. I'm just pretty much weaving it through. Got maybe two more left to do. Or one left to do. All right, and this is my last one. So I'm just gonna pull that through there. And then again, just for this time being, I'm just going to slip knot the end there. And that is it. So I can take my guide band out, take this other loom away, and we can reveal the finished bracelet. Oh, it came out gorgeous. 
It really came out beautiful. And these, these are loose in here, you know? So you just wanna, like I like to play with mine and you can put your chain towards the back. Like I'm just pulling on it, which pops out that bling. And as long as you keep that chain straight, that bling will stay straight in there. So let's see what it looks like. Oh my gosh. Tell me that's not gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. And it's again, it's very light, airy. And like, I like to push this in like that. And then just the bling will kind of pop out. Now this looks like a $200 bracelet, does it not? I mean, that is just, I'm very, very, very happy with how this turned out. I hope you are happy with the way that yours turned out. So in order to close this, there are so many things you can do. Um, the easiest way, which is usually the way that I like to explain, um, I have to go get some C-clips. Hang on. Okay, okay, so to close this out, which I'm not big on closures because they're always hidden, but it's super easy. We'll just add two C-clips. Okay, so this band here is the band that we pulled through. Let me zoom in. I'm going to pull this other band, which I use as my slip knot. I'm going to pull that band through too. Okay, so I'll have two bands there. And I want to take my C-clip and then just clip both sides of it. So I'm going to use a large one because we need to have enough to put four bands in there. Okay, so then on this side I used a clear band so I need to grab a silver band. So let me take out my slip knot and then put this band back on my hook. So that's the band that you end with that went through so I'm just going to put my hook through so I can pull this new band through both the chain and that band that closed up and do the same, adding a C-clip. To this side as well. Uh-oh. There we go. So we're just going to have a two clip closure. So then we just come down and this is the end that we started on. So I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to pull a band through and then attach it to my C clip down here. That's the, the easiest, quickest, if, you, if you're not a big, if closures aren't a big deal to you, like they're not to me because nobody sees them, that's the easiest way that you can close up the bracelet. But if you are MS Loom, um, Marga, or um, Adele Griffith, uh, they love to use different closures like this. This is a magnetic clasp that will work wonderfully. And these are toggle clasps and that will work uh, beautifully as well. But for me, I like that stretchability. So whenever I do put it on, and this one I am keeping, I hate to be selfish because I give them all away. See now this one I made a little bit big but that's okay. So when I put it on, that's down there and I don't care. And voila, we have a very, very, very beautiful, special Blair bracelet. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you love yours. 
and I am so super excited to see your renditions and your um, different ideas uh, of what types of bling that you come up with to incorporate into your the Blair bracelet. So again, thanks for watching guys. I am so super happy to have all of you in my life. Uh, you surely put a smile on my face every day. So thanks again guys. Take care. Bye-bye.